government has river basin projects okay. across all the states in the federation. You pay the money, they prepare the land for you, they ask you what do you want to plant. It's as simple as I'm talking about it. I have some secret formulas I use for some of my products. It works very well. I put one of the best asthmatic products. It's organic. I'm not a pharmacist. You are. But you can also bring that value chain into it using IT. Essentially what he's told you is there are opportunities around you everywhere. Even within the agro ally, without you owning land, without you planting anything, your degree is information. After you get the degree, say thank you to your parents, give it to them. Use part of the information you have, but get whatever else you don't have. My name is Adeda Flora. I'm a graduate of accounting education from the University of Adekiti. I'm also a caterer. My business is all about catering events. Uh, I do cakes for all locations, small jobs, cocktail drinks, I also decorators. This one is Sharpman. The ingredients for making a, uh, a Sharpman are minerals, tasty thyme, Augustura bitters. You mix everything together, then our Sharpman is ready. And this is the ice, the ice cube for it. Then this is cucumber for garnishing. Put a straw. Then you garnish it with this. Hmm, yummy, tasty. I love it. Ignite Show has really helped me to develop myself. Instead of waiting for a white collar job, I've uh, developed myself, and uh, this with this under work has helped me to sustain myself. So I really thank uh, the Ignite, uh, Lagos Ignite show. Yeah, right now if I have a big job, I'll, I'll go and rent uh, this equipment so that I can uh, do my uh, job. So I want to say thank you to Lagos State Ignite for their support, for this, for making me to develop myself. I'm really grateful for this. Hi, my name is Flora. I'm a caterer and an entrepreneur. What do you need to take your business to the next level? Expert advice? Affordable financing? State-of-the-art technology? A partner you can trust. At First Bank, we can help with that. Visit sme.firstbanknigeria.com to find out how we can help you grow your business. First Bank. My name is Bosse Obo. I am a farmer. I'm an agriculture consultant. I'm an agricultural trainer. I am an agro tourist. And I'm a food processor. And I'm a fresh fruit juice maker. I had my first degree in agriculture in a Nigerian university. But I was there because I wanted to do something in agriculture and that was when I came out I worked briefly um, with a bank one of the new generation banks then but I knew I couldn't just sit down in an office I wanted to be on the field so eventually after one and a half years I went out of you know the bank job and I went to do my own farm and I've been a farmer all along but somehow you know parental um, acceptance and guidance helped me because then I knew I wasn't going to work for anyone. I wasn't going to, uh, not because of the salary, not because I wanted to be independent, but because I saw a lot of lapses, you know, in the agricultural 
value chain, in the food value chain. And I said, no, somebody should just come up and do something. And that was, you know, what gingered me. That was the passion, what I had, that made me go into agriculture. And um, when I started as a farmer, I saw that it shouldn't end there. Because as a farmer then, I grew cassava, I raised chickens, I raised um, fishes, I raised snails, I did apiculture, which is honey, bee production, I mean honey production. I saw that just raising these things or growing these crops and selling them into the open market were not fetching me, you know, good deal. And I went into processing. And that's what I've been doing for um, over a decade now, and it's been very fantastic. My name is Olivia Obuako. I run a fresh fruit juice company. I produce and I retail. I also sell fresh vegetables. I also do the juices. I didn't just go into the business. I never knew I was going into business in my life. I read sociology as my first degree. Then I had my master's in public admin. While I was still doing my master's, I got a job with an insurance company where I was marketing life policies. I did that for 10 years. But I tell you, while doing that job, I knew I was not supposed to be there. I kept telling my, my colleagues, I don't like the job that I'm doing. But even then, I didn't know what I was going to do. But after 10 years, I just stopped. So when I'm going back home, I'll just buy. If I see pineapples, see oranges, I'll buy. I'll go home. I was just using all kinds of things to produce them. I was using cloth. I was using my sieve in the kitchen. I was using a lot of things. As of yesterday, when I was driving back from my shop, I was telling my, my in-law that was with me, I said, do you know this business I'm into today? It has always been in me. It does that. I never really knew what I wanted to do, but it has always been there. Because I'll be working, if I see fruit, if I see vegetables, ah, God. I just love it. So what I did, somebody now one day and said, why not start selling in the church? Remember, I have not seen anybody selling juice before. I didn't even know there's a machine that you can use to produce these juices. So what I did, I had a small kitchen blender. I will now blend my pineapple. When somebody said I should start selling in the church, after about so many months, I now decided to take a step of it. Then and I now used that kitchen blender, blended the, the pineapple, then used cloth to squeeze it. This one took me almost one hour to produce just one small pineapple. But I was happy. You know, the, what, what I found out was that whenever I was doing the juice then, the kind of joy that used to come upon me, I couldn't just express it. I couldn't explain it. So I just kept, so what I did that day, I decided, okay, let me just take two bottles to church and see if anybody will even buy. We had a program in the church, and they said we, could, we should bring things to the church. And I brought the two bottles. I gave to the guest minister. The guest minister drank it after the, after the program. Somebody said, who brought that thing in ever bottle? It tasted like pineapple. You know what I did? I just added a little bit of ginger. So the woman said, please, can you, how much do you sell them? That, you know, I just, I used 100 naira to produce it, so it didn't really mean, I said, 500 a bottle. I just said 500. The woman said, can I have two bottles? So I just used 100 naira to produce two bottles of pineapple juice, and I got 1,000. When I found out that that woman liked it, the following Sunday, I just went to that Ketu market. You know, I was living in Ketu, so I just went to the market. But I think for, uh, pineapples worth 300, 300 naira. Then I produced, I got about, um, Maybe, I can't remember, but about 15 ever bottles. Then, fruits were very cheap. So I now took it to the church, put it in the boot of my car. After service, I just told a few people, I'm selling fresh juice, so please come and buy. You know, open the boot. I had about 15 to 30 bottles. Before I knew it, I just sold everything. The big ever bottle. Then somebody now came and said, does it mean if you don't have 500 now, you can't buy this juice? I said, okay, next week I'm going to bring the 75 CL. Then I brought it down to 250, half the price. That was how I started selling. Every Sunday after service, I opened my boot and I sell. 
Within 30 minutes, I finished my business. I did that for a year. I got tired. And I rested. I rested for another one year. <laughs> I rested for another one year. My husband came back. He went to work, came back and said, that woman that bought that juice then, two years ago or thereabouts, said, why has she not continued that business? Why did she stop? Then I just knew it was a confirmation to start again. So the following week, I just started. You know what I did? I now started going to factories to get, I, I didn't want to now start going to pick bottles again. So I now went to factories, looked for smaller bottles so that everybody could buy. So I started producing in 35 CL. Remember then, I had not seen somebody doing it. Then one day I went to the market to buy my fruit. I was just where I was buying my pineapple. I saw one lady standing. She also was buying pineapple. And I said, excuse me, ma, please, what do you do with your pineapples? She said, I make fresh juice. I said, uh, where? She said, somewhere in VI. I said, uh, do you have a juicer for it? She said, yes, but it's small, it's not big. I said, uh, please, can I come and visit you? She said, yes. I said, this is the answer to my prayers. So the full, after a week, I went to her shop. She showed me one orange machine. She said, it's over 600,000. I screamed. She said, I'll help you. I said, how? She said, when I travel next, I'm going to bring some machines in. I'll give you. Pay as you like. At the end, she gave me one orange machine that I'm still using today, one small machine. She had four. She just said, take this. Are you a creative person? Are you looking for the right partner to help you transform your talent into your business? We can help with that. First Bank SME Connect. Visit sme.firstbanknigeria.com to find out more. First Bank. In agriculture that I do, like I said, I'm into planting of the crops, and initially what I do is when I plant the crops, I look for um, people in the community, in the farm communities, or some of those people that come from Lagos or some cities to come and buy. Then I had my farm in Ekpe, which is in Lagos State, and another one in Ota, close to um, Idiroko, Agbara Access. And um, normally when, you know, it's harvesting time, you begin to look for people to come and buy, and they just buy at a ridiculous, you know, rate. I've grown cassava for like nine months, and you're coming to want to buy a pickup of cassava, you know, for peanuts. And more so, what I was doing, because I decided I just wanted to do things one differently, and I wanted to do it the right way. So I decided that, how much are they selling cassava? I mean, how much are they selling Gary outside? The gallery will buy the paint plastic then, maybe 100 naira or 120, you know, naira. And I said, if I do this one full load of pickup of cassava and I process it into gallery, I think I'll end better. So that was the drive I had. And I said, okay, fine. No more selling of anything that I produce from the farm. I will start processing. So I started processing. So I discovered, that why should I, I mean, why should we be drinking or be making gari that is full of sand? And I said, okay, how do these people process it? They do the same. Most of the communities, they don't have water. They don't, you know, they have to go to the river, which is a very long distance from the village. I said, okay, fine. I'm going to do a processing unit. There, we're going to have a well. And it was like the well for the whole community because they never saw well there. They were always going to the stream. You know, so at the end of the day, we started processing the gari and I said, the gari must not have a single grain of sand. And that was the breakthrough. So I realized that if I package my gari, I will attract some set of people in the society. People that are like me, they don't want to take sand in their gari. And at the end of the day, when we process and we bag them, labeled rightly, we're selling in shops. And do you know that then a paint plastic of Gary, the right, the real paint plastic, not the one we're using now, 
was 3 kg. Now the 3 kg of Gary then was sold for 100 Naira. But as of that time, I was selling my Gary for 300 Naira per that 3 kg because I had already backed them in 1 kg searches. And when people, when I'm selling to the wholesalers that would now retail, I don't know how much they were selling then, it was coming from me for 300 Naira. And really the thing I had put into it, the extra I had put into it was just like 20 Naira. So I had a good thing to make because one, I understood the market. And you see, one of my philosophies in business is what infuriates me the most is what I am meant to solve. Just like Oliver was saying, she hated getting to a place and not finding fruits. Now, the thing that consumes me, the things that I hate the most, I see it that that is the solution, that is the problem I should prefer solution to. I hate anything called bad food. Do you want to grow your business by selling to people in different ways? We can help with that. First Bank SME Connect. Visit sme.firstbanknigeria.com to find out more. First Bank. Are you a Nigerian? Do you have a business idea but lack the initial capital? AGDC, in partnership with Lagos State Government, the Chair Center Group, founded by Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika, presents through an online contest, Ignite Ideas Contest, to give seed capital of 100,000 Naira each to 1,100 people and one-year business mentorship. There is more. You also get access to credit facility from one of the biggest banks in the country. All you have to do is log on to www.igniteideas.org to register and fill the application form. You should also follow them on their social media pages. Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Ignite Ideas Contest. Twitter, at Ignite Contest. Hurry and give your business ideas some life. Any other challenge you'd like us to talk about? I get to help people with their plot of land, the, the cassava and all the meats they want to sell and they will tell you, well, this is the amount I want to sell my own. This is how Mr. Lagbaja helped me with it and you're about like, ah. But this is the factor, one plot for this amount, uh, 0 0.5 hectares for this amount and that is how it's supposed to be. And they will tell you, no, no, this is how much I get for this one and if you cannot do, go your way and it's... Your profit is gauged out because you might, it's not the same location as yours and you travel, you spend money and all the rest of it to get to the place where you want to help to sell. Then in the side of Sydney's, you've read a thousand Sydney's ready to be sold and you're getting around to ask people who you are know can be a prospective client to buy from you and they're telling you, well, we buy from Nada, we buy from this corporation and what corporation are you well I'm upcoming corporation and this kind <laughs> of like company that. and they will tell you well we don't care about this we what even tells you your seed is by seedling is viable you keep going back and forth with how to just sell it off little or no you have to sell to these petty farmers and they buy little now when you're talking about people not paying you a fair price because you don't have a brand, so to speak. The honest truth is there's always a cost for not having a brand and you must accept that at the early stage. So what you want to do is, even people that will not touch your seedling at all because they, they can't trust it, what do you do in a situation like that? You give them some seedlings for free. I know that you might think that's tough because you do want to make money from your sibling. Yes. But consider it your initial cost. Consider it part of your cost of doing business at the beginning. Because when you gain their confidence, you will ultimately generate the returns from them. But you need the acceptance first. So you can say to them, okay, I understand that you don't trust my sibling, but I'm willing to give you this one kilo of sibling these 500 grams of seedling. Plant it, compare it with the ones 
that you've bought before and if you find that it works and that it's good and it meets everything that I've said, would you buy from me next time? They'll probably say yes. To prove you wrong, they're going to try it because they're not expecting to get the result. And if they try it and they get a better result than you've even expressed, then they are amazed. Now, the other thing as well is, as you do that, you can have an end, a price entry point that is lower than the brand names. So your point of entry is easier, it's cheaper, and sometimes you can actually sell to them at a higher price. Because they can't buy from the big guys, and it's small guy to small guy, they also pay you immediately. You are not waiting for 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days from the big guys. So, yes, it's good to sell to the big companies or the big cooperatives, but start. If the people you sell to will buy only 500 grams of seedlings, each, just if you sell 500 or 500 gram packs, what have you sold? 250 kilograms. The big guys will probably buy what? 100 kilograms? 50 kilograms? Yes, it's more work dealing with more people. What is your, you, you know the one thing you must never do in business is forget who you are. Your reality is you are a small guy. <laughs> That's the honest truth. You are at the early stage of business and you're trying to build up. Don't deceive yourself. Do you understand? But that big place you are going to is your long-term goal. Facing the reality of who you are now allows you to define your market. Also allows you not to waste a lot of time and resources chasing after places that are more difficult for you to get in. You know why? If you sell to 50 small guys, when you get to the big guy and they say, what's your track record? They have 50 names on your list. But if you're already servicing all of them, the important thing is you have proven that your sitting can work. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, as small businesses getting started, the key thing is you want to establish yourself. Build while nobody is looking. By the time you've helped the small guys to become big, the big guys will try to sell to them, but they will be used to you already, so they're not going to go to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the way to remove that stumbling block of all, offer some free savings. It's a short-term cost for a long-term gain. Two, go after the low-hanging fruits first. Gather all that market, because their aggregate number gives you a higher value sometimes than the one big guy that you spent 10 months trying to sell one bag of 100 kilograms. Send in your comments, questions, and shout-outs to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ignite TV, Twitter slash Ignite TV NG, and check out our website, www.ignite-tv.com. For extras on Ignite, visit our YouTube account on www.youtube.com slash Ignite TV Nigeria. For lots more about the show and lots of useful information on building your business.